This is your economics video on production possibility curves. The production possibility curve or production possibility frontier is a very basic graph and it's the first major graph that you're going to have to be able to draw and interpret. So here is an example. A production possibility frontier or curve is just a very simple graph that shows exactly what the title says, the production that's possible. So for this example here, the title of this graph is Acme Corporation. So this is telling you that this is one corporation's production that's possible. Each of the two axes are going to be labeled with one of two different goods or services that this company could provide. So this one, uh, this company can use their resources to make motor cars or chocolate bars. If they use all of their resources to make motor cars and they want to put every single uh, laborer and every piece of equipment they have into making motor cars, they can make 10 motor cars. But if you make 10 motor cars, you can make zero chocolate bars. Alternatively, if you used all of your resources to make chocolate bars, you can make a thousand of them, but then you have no more resources left over to make motor cars. The line between these dots represents the production that's possible if you want to have some motor cars and some chocolate bars. The green shaded area, this plane here, also represents possible combinations of motor cars and chocolate bars that Acme Corporation uh, could create uh, using the resources that they have. Now, this particular example here that I've posted has a straight line. PPFs and PPCs generally have a line that stretches all the way from one axis to the other. But this line doesn't have to be straight. It can also be uh, bowed outward. And um, we're going to talk about bowed outward ones in a future video. But that's why sometimes they're called production possibility curves, because the line can be curved. It doesn't have to be. So your production possibility frontier is a, basically a graph that shows a combination of two goods um, that the economy, either the economy of a country or the economy of a one company can possibly produce, hence production possibilities, given the resources that um, a particular company has and the technology available. So in the next few videos, we're going to do an example in class, and I'm going to use two goods, and they're going to be computers and wheat. So we're going to say um, that a particular country, the United States, let's say, has the option of producing computers and or wheat um, and, you know, various combinations if they choose to. You do have to measure um, in one resource. So we're going to measure ours in labor hours. It could also be measured in other things like acreage, like a farmer who has a certain number of acres can use that acreage for planting corn or wheat and figure out how much of e how many acres to put into each good. For our example here, let's say that this particular economy has 50,000 labor hours per month for production. So if you have 50,000 labor hours, you have to decide how to divvy up those labor hours into computers and or wheat. So here's an example. Up at the top here, they're giving us more data. To produce one computer requires that they use 100 labor hours, and to produce one ton of wheat requires 10 labor hours. So if I decide to use all of the labor hours, all 50,000 for computers, and make no wheat whatsoever, then this particular uh, country can make 500 computers but no wheat. I can also divvy them up based on labor hours and production values to get various um, combinations of wheat and computers. And then of course I could use all 50,000 labor hours to make wheat and then I'd get 50 or I'd get 5,000 tons of wheat but I wouldn't get any computers. If I were to graph these points onto a graph, you would get a graph for the United States. And that's what you're going to do for your next active learning. So get out your active learning paper, and this will be active learning number eight. We're going to pretend that this example is for the United States. <clears throat> and using the uh, resources and examples from the question, I want you to draw your own production possibility curve on your active learning. Make sure you put a title on it, which will be the country. Um, in this one, on the vertical axis, if you would put wheat on the vertical axis and computers on the horizontal axis, and then use the data here in order to draw the PPF. Make sure you're adding in the maximum number of wheat and the maximum number of computers 
that each um, that the United States could make if they decided to only make that particular good and make sure that your line stretches all the way from one axis to another. If you've done your production possibility frontier correctly, it should look something like this. Um, you should have the title up at the top, US, PPF, or the United States is fine. You have to label both axes. They told you to put wheat on the vertical and computers on the horizontal. You don't have to have all of these various numbers in here. Um, I just put those in um, to help us. But you do have to use the data that they told us to figure out the maximum number. If we used all of our resources for wheat, we can make 5,000 tons of wheat or all of our resources for computers, we'd make 500 computers. And then the line between them represents all of the possible combinations of wheat and computers that this particular country could make. So you do not have to have all of these extra numbers in here like 4,000, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000. You just have to have the maximum number or the numbers that associate with any dots that you have on your graph.